Sacrifice here. Disturbing Mirth. Skyclave Shade. We will manifest dread the Needlekin. Flip up the Needlekin. Oh my goodness, we got there! Oh, we did it! We did it! <laughs> oh my goodness. Draw the card, you are punished. Torment of Scarabs punishes you. It doesn't matter. We could even get rid of the cat right now, and that still punishes our opponent. Do it! Yes! Razorkin Needlehead! Oh, opponent, do whatever you want. I don't... Oh, yes! Yes, 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 yes! Hello, my fiery friends. The Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, we're going to be continuing our journey through Duskmoor. However, we're going to be playing one of my favorite archetypes, Rakdos Sacrifice. The twist this time, of course, is not only are we going to be mixing together brand new cards from the set, we're going to be forcing our opponent to do a little bit of bad decision making. What do I mean by that? Well, without further ado, let's just show you today's deck, a deck that I'm simply calling The Punisher. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content. You can support me monthly for a small amount on Patreon, where I have all of my extended bonus footage posted. Or, for free, all you can just do also is just join our growing community on Discord. Your support helps keep this channel going. All links are in the details below. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So our Punisher to deck is going to be a Rakdos style. In other words, it's going to be black and red. We're looking at an average mana curve of about 2.2. You're looking at 14 creatures, 7 instants, 3 sorceries, 4 artifacts, 10 enchantments, and 22 lands. As mentioned earlier, the deck is focusing on a Rakdos mid-range build. However, the twist this time is we want to put our opponent in a bad position where they kind of have to make bad decisions or i.e. punish them no matter what they do. We have a couple cards that will force our opponent to either take damage or give us a lot of card advantage. And if they fall prey to any of our other things, such as sacrificing things for value, they will get even more punishment as the game drags on. But how exactly are we going to even begin to punish our opponent? Well, you got me. Well, I'm glad you asked. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's talk about the cards in the deck. Starting in the one drop slot, we will have the one and only Cauldron Familiar. I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain this, of course, but this is why, of course, you see Witch's Oven. Mostly this means to punish, if you will, our opponent for attacking us, because we can chump block, sacrifice the cat, make the food, sacrifice the food at the end of their turn to bring back the cat and continue the cycle over and over again. In the two drops slot, we were now going to try to find a way to punish our opponent's card draw with a brand new card from Duskmorn, Razorkin Needlehead. So let's talk about this card for just a moment. Razorkin Needlehead is a two mana human assassin that has 2 2, and it says, on during our turn, it will have first strike. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Razorkin Needlehead will deal one damage to them. So, in other words, this is basically a baby shieldred. It won't help us gain any life, but pinging our opponent even for one in the two drop slot is a very powerful ability, and we will be punishing our opponent if they tend to get a little greedy with their card draw. And then in the two drop slot as well, we also have Zoyoa Lava Tongue. So we'll talk about this card for just a moment because I don't think anybody remembers this card from Ixalan. So this is a two mana Goblin Warlock. It's a legendary creature and it has 2-2 with Death Touch. At the beginning of your end step, if you have descended this turn, each opponent may discard a card or sacrifice a permanent. Then the Lava Tongue will deal three damage to each opponent who doesn't. So in other words, that will add up very quickly and will just strip our opponent of either resources or just continually keep draining them until they get to next to nothing. And then finally in the three drop slot, we will have Mayhem Devil. This of course will help ensure that we punish our opponent if they attend to try to do any sacrifice against us as we ping them down for everything. Of course, we will be doing a lot of sacrificing on our end, so we'll be able to easily trigger this off very quickly with Cauldron Familiar, with the Lava Tongue, and basically everything else that our deck is trying to do. Circling back over to the one drops off for your non-creature spells, we just talked about this, it's going to be Witch's Oven. Keep in mind, again, while it does combo off with Cauldron Familiar, you are welcome, of course, to utilize it to sacrifice any one of your other creatures just to get a little extra value, maybe to get another sacrifice trigger to go off, or at least to get some food to stabilize later in the game. Now, going into the two drops, this is again where things get a lot more interesting for us. We're actually going to start with Disturbing Mirth. So, when this enters, you can sacrifice another enchantment or creature. If you do, you'll get to draw two cards. And if it does get sacrificed, this card will also get to Manifest Dread. So, this can create for us a lot of value just for having it on the battlefield or to use it to sacrifice it into getting some more cards for us. As for what the sacking abilities are, we'll use Betrayer's Bargain here. So either you pay four, but usually you don't want to pay four mana for this. You only want to pay two and sacrifice either another creature or an enchantment. By doing so, we'll then be able to do 
five damage to a target creature. And if that creature would die, it will get exiled. So this is great for us to turn off certain death triggers against our opponent's creatures. As far as one of our other sack outlets for us, and also it works as removal, it's going to be nowhere to run. This has the flash ability, and it is an enchantment. When this enters, the target creature and opponent controls will get minus three, minus three until end of turn. Creatures our opponent's control can be the targets of spells or abilities as if they didn't have hexproof, and ward will not trigger either. So this is great to turn off those abilities and punish our opponent thinking they have all the protection, which they will definitely not when this enters. Now, as far as the three drop slot is concerned, we'll have some of our punishing cards here to use against our opponents. So in other words, these will create a bad deal for them, similar to what Lava Tongue was doing. Starting with Sword Point Diplomacy here, we will reveal the top three cards of our library, and our opponent will have to choose. They either can give us those cards, or they can exile them. Every card they do exile, however, they will get hit for three life. So our opponent has to choose very carefully as to what they want to give us. Either way, it's still a good deal for us. Speaking of, again, other deals, we also have Risk Factor here. This is also a 3 mana, and it's an instant, and it reads, Our target opponent may have Risk Factor eel 4 damage to them, but if they don't want the damage, we will get 3 cards. This also has the Jumpstart ability, meaning that we can also play this from our graveyard as long as we discard a card and pay the mana cost. Once again, either our opponent has to take damage, or we just get some more card draw out of our deck. Finally, to wrap it up, we will have Torment of Scarabs here. This is our final game piece here and our finisher. So this is a curse that we will enchant our opponent with. And it says at the beginning of the enchanted player's upkeep, they will either lose three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. In other words, this is just a more expensive enchantment version of the Lava Tongue. And it also just doesn't require us to jump through that many hoops. As far as your mana base is concerned, as always, this is a budget deck, so we're going to keep it as simple as possible. We are going to go right down the middle with swamps and mountains. We're going to take advantage of, again, foreboding ruins. Remember that, again, in paper, this is actually a rare, but in arena, it's an uncommon. So we're going to take advantage of that, and then we will utilize some of the Capenna sacrifice lands with Maestro's Theater and River's Overlook. They automatically sacrifice, but we do gain some life, and that will trigger off the Lava Tongue and Mayhem Devil's abilities. If you want to take this into best of three, here's my recommendations for you for your sideboard. Duress is always this is great for those enemy control decks and combo decks out there to strip them of their key pieces. Bandit's Talent is actually going to be really great. It is mostly an expensive card as time goes on, but if you do have games that drag longer, you can then forcefully make your opponent discard, make them drain if they do tend to pull out their whole hand onto the battlefield, or again, we can just turn this into a really, really expensive and slow Phyrexian Arena. Pyroclasm here, just two copies of this, is going to be for more of the weaker decks out there. We do have a lot of white weenie decks actually in the format now, and also there's a couple of Boros Convoke decks that this will hit really hard. If you do need to utilize more sacrifice um, options for you and value, you bring in Oni Cult Anvil. You could probably replace your Lava Tongues with these if you just want to go full on sacrifice with this. They also will create some constructs for you, which you can also sacrifice actually to some of your other abilities, such as Betrayer's Bargain or Disturbing Mirth. Elspeth's Nightmare here is just extra removal for you, extra discard, and of course it's going to be our Graveyard Hate. And to round out the package, one of my favorite cards also is Tybalt Rakish Instigator. I do love this card because, again, not only it can turn off your opponent's life gain, but also it can create some Devil Tokens for us, which again can be sacrificed for extra value and extra damage. But the real question we need to ask ourselves is, is it possible for Rakdos Sacrifice on a budget in Explorer to pull off a bunch of extra value utilizing enchantments instead of artifacts? Yes! Let's take this into Explorer now and see how well it does. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can we punish our opponent with our deck? Well, okay, we don't have the right mana for this, so this is a little awkward, so we're going to have to mulligan. Okay, uh, slow, but it is workable, so we'll play with this. We'll put back the Torment of Scarabs. Okay, so I guess the game plan here is we get the red mana first, put down black mana for nowhere to run, and we'll go from there. Okay, so my choice theater. This will give us our mountain we need. We can put down Nowhere to Run or Zoyova, depending on what our opponent's going to try to do here. Ooh, okay. So, let's see. Ooh, oh. Actually, hmm. We have options here. I think what we will do here is actually Nowhere to Run. The Danto Vanguard goes bye-bye. Okay, so the way we can do this now is the Lava Tongue can come down. We should be able to get some more damage from there. Okay. Lava Tongue. I don't think anybody I've ever seen in Arena actually play this card, so hopefully this will be our secret tech to beat down our opponent. Bone Crusher Giant. Oh. Surprised they actually did not want to just remove that. Interesting. 
Okay, well, I guess that helps us out a little bit here. So with that, I think Betrayer's Bargain will sacrifice our Nowhere to Run. We will get hit for two, but that's totally fine. We'll take that damage. Say bye-bye, giant. Swing here for two. Now we get to trigger this off. All right, we actually get to trigger this off. Usually I never get a chance to do that. All right, what do you pick, opponent? Ooh, they take the three damage? All right. See? It works. This card totally works. Kumamo. Ooh, I really could have put Kumamo in this deck. Maybe something to think about as an alternative in the future. All right, opponent. Hmm, interesting. They did not play anything, so I guess we'll take advantage of this now. Razor can Needlehead. If they have a giant, though, I'm anticipating that they'll probably have more removal soon. I guess we swing. But they do have a play with fire. All right, well, might as well get the value out of it by making food. Some has bone crusher giants. Okay, well, that's fine, I guess. All right, so how do we do this here? Okay, so I think Mayhem Devil coming down. Foreboding Ruins is tapped. That's fine. They have three cards in hand. We have managed to slow them down quite a bit, so... Even though they have cards like... Here... The Etching of Kumamo. That's fine. Yeah, they have Lightning Helix, too? Okay, well... It's getting really annoying, actually. So we ping him. At least we're going to try to stay above all this. Down to 15. Razor can needle hit number two. Okay, we'll take that. We gotta keep the pressure on with our opponent. Play with fire. Wow, we're having to sack a lot of our stuff here. But that's fine. We can still slow them down a bit. Alright. Nowhere to run. Take out the etching. That's a really fast clock. Come on, deck. Give me something to help. Anything would help us here. Unfortunately, the land did not help. Oh, boy. Well, our opponent here is playing a, a really interesting Boros aggro deck for us. Not what I was expecting at all. All right. Well, not what I want to do either. We're going to have to sacrifice some food. Just to stay alive. Okay, come on, deck. In the meantime, we'll hit nowhere to run on that glory bound initiate. We have to slow things down as much as possible. Okay, so Yova Lava Tongue is not the worst. It's indestructible, so we can't really we can't really do anything again about that. But we can sacrifice food now, so we can at least trigger off the Zyova and pass. Okay, opponent, what do you do? I guess they'll throw away a card. Oh, they have the play with fire. Come on, opponents. Okay, well, I guess we don't get that trigger either. Well, this is actually really awkward because this is not a deck I expected at all to face today, but okay. This opponent really came at us with a secret deck tech out of nowhere. Well, that was unfortunate. I had no idea what our opponent was playing. They were just playing some kind of random pile of Boros midrange. Not even anything that was meta, but I mean, I guess, I guess I can't really hate. They did come at me with something I was not expecting at all, so... Kudos to you, opponent. I'll give you that, at least. Okay, my fire friends, here we go. Can the Punisher punish our opponent? Well, we have... We have the mana. It's at least decently fixed, so we have what we need. We hopefully can just draw into more action. So let's just keep this, and hopefully, this should be enough against our opponent. Okay, we got Betrayer's Bargain, which is nice. Foreboding Ruins, revealing the mountain. Uh, opponent, what do you got? A tap land there. Okay, well, that helps us out a bit. Oh. All right, well, there's the Thoughtsea, so... Oh, they threw away the Mayhem Devil. Interesting. Okay. So that probably means they didn't have an answer for that immediately, but we'll try. Okay. They draw. We ping. Uh, opponent, do you have removal? Playing mono black means you should have some kind of removal. At least I, that's what I believe. Blood Chief Thirst. No surprise. Asylum Visitor. Interesting choice. Oh, okay. We'll put down the Mountain. We get, let's risk factor our opponent here. They'll most likely take 4 damage. Yep, down 13. 
If we can at least get the next land down, we can at least have just enough where we're going to have to pay full price on these Betrayer's Bargains. But that's fine. Oh, it's a waste not, so... Okay, so we're probably going to try to see if they can just outmaneuver us with a bunch of card draw. I think we'll just do it this way. We're just going to have to start paying full price just to get rid of that Asylum Visitor. Or if they have a Shieldred, then also we can get rid of that with Betrayer's Bargain. Full price. Not what I want to do, but we have to keep the board clear. Alright, that's out of the way. Description of Ruin. Okay, discard two cards. Alright. So it does mean they will get to draw some stuff. Annoying, but okay. Uh, opponent. Alright, so we got a land. Sword Point Diplomacy. What do you choose, opponent? What do we reveal here? So we got Zoyova, Nowhere to Run, and a Mountain. I'm guessing they're going to probably give us one of these cards. Something that doesn't help them at all. Oh, we got the Zoyova. Okay. Got the Nowhere to Run. Interesting. Oh, we actually got everything. Okay. Well, I guess it helps us out a bit here. So, let's see. Do they fire up Hive of the Eye Tyrant? Do they draw more cards? We'll see. Thoughtsies. Okay. Well, that's very annoying, but okay. They get rid of... Yep, the Lava Tongue. Okay. Come on. There we go. Okay. We got a Betrayer's Bargain, so I guess it's okay for now. They draw. Okay. So, what do you got, opponents? Three cards in hand. Lily onto the Veil. All right. Like, it's going to only hit creatures, right? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's unfortunate, but okay. Okay, so here's how we do this. Nowhere to run. Get rid of the zombie. We Riz Factor. I guess we might as well just do this for some value. So you get to draw a card. Come on, opponent. Okay. So no real value from them. Or at least we already gave them what they wanted, I suppose. But okay. Second Waste Knot. Ooh, that might be a little tough to get rid of, but okay. Witch's Oven. Alright, they can start taking up now, or they can start using their Hive of the Eye Tyrant to just start getting us down to nothing. Alright, Hive of the Eye Tyrant getting fired up. They swing. They'll eat something out of our graveyard. Alright, there goes our Mayhem Devil. Horn of Scarabs. I mean, that kind of puts them in an awkward spot, because they can't really take too much damage from this thing, but we'll try. Maybe that might be enough. Maybe? We'll see. Okay, what do you take, opponent? You discard a card? Sacrifice something? Okay, so they got rid of the removal. So they're going to fire up Hyper the Eye Tyrant again, and hit us. It only does three damage, so we do have a little bit of time. Not much. The clock is going to be really tight here on us. They can afford to throw away some stuff or discard if they need to. Ooh, Mayhem Devil's not bad here. Our opponent has removal. If they sacrifice, we actually have an edge here. Okay, so they did discard. Do they take up or down with Liliana? Okay, so from here, sacrifice the Witches of it. Hit our opponents. Make a food. Well, that might have been a big game changer for us. Because that food does buy us a turn. One whole turn could make a difference here. And also, we pinged them for one, so that means three damage from Torment of Scarabs means that they, they really cannot afford to do much else here. They can only take one hit from the Torment of Scarabs. But well, we bought ourselves at least one more food here, so that does help. Ooh, Disturbing Birth is actually good here. Alright, so, we might be back in this fight. Sacrifice and nowhere to run. Draw two cards. Oh, jeez. We didn't get anything off of that? Wow, that sucks. Okay. Maestro's Theater. Might as well just, I guess, get the life. Swamp. And pass. Okay, opponent. Discarding a card again? Okay, firing up the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Alright. If we can just get at least another creature, we can still stall out. Down to six. Okay. Oh, did we get there? Did we get there with the Cauldron Familiar? Did we get there? This is the bit difference maker, everybody. Here we go. Mountain down. Pass. What do you got, opponent? Alright, so. 
And Liliana can't really do anything here. I think we might have gotten there. I mean, they take up. That's fine. I don't know why they did that. I'm so now they of kind of threw away a card. Okay. Okay, they eat. We're going out of four. We sack. Make the food. Get the food back. Make the cat. Come back. We will then go here. Swing. Down to three. Mountain down. And pass. Okay, opponents. You have to sacrifice something. They sacrifice a waste knot. You can do whatever you want, opponent. You want to discard, you can discard. Okay. I have the Tyrant coming back online again. Of course, they'll do their thing. Okay, that's fine. Take the damage down to two. Skyclave Shade, okay. Okay, that can't block anyway, so that actually helps us out here. Oh my goodness, I think we actually won. So, discard, they take up. Don't did we do this? Think. Oh my goodness. I think we did got there, everybody. I think we got there. Oh my goodness, I think we did it. Yes, I think we did it right here. Get rid of the sky cliche. We don't even have to do that, but we're just going to do it anyway. Sacrifice here. Disturbing mirth. Skyclave Shade. We will manifest dread the Needlekin. Flip up the Needlekin. Oh my goodness, we got there! Oh, we did it! We did it! <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes! Do whatever you want, opponent. It doesn't matter. Draw the card. You are punished. Torment of Scarabs punishes you. It doesn't matter. We could even get rid of the cat right now, and that still punishes our opponent. Draw the card, opponents. Do it. Yes! Razor can needlehead. Woo! <laughs> oh, opponent, do whatever you want. I don't... Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Wow. Down to the wire, and we still managed to do it. There you go, everybody. The combo slow and steady but we were able to just get our opponent down another thing oh man we punished them so good there okay my fire friends here we go can we punish our opponent by giving us some bad deals well looking at what we have right now okay so i think we should be able to keep this we should be good so slow with the mayhem devils but we can start getting some more value in just a moment at least once we start putting on our cards all right so with that foreboding ruins, revealing the mountain, pass. All right, spirit of companion. Wolf, wolf. All right, swamp. All right, so let's see. We'll put down the mountain, and we will put down our razorkin, needlehead. One drops a card. They get pinged. Island. Touch the spirit realm. All right, well, that means that her Razor Kid Needlehead goes bye-bye. It's fine. It's fine, everyone. We still have some more value here for some other cards. Mayhem Devil. So our opponent, I'm guessing, is playing a Blink deck, since it's mostly just going to be ETB triggers. Spring Verdict. Wow, they actually blew away everything. I'm actually kind of surprised about they wasted it that hard, but okay. I mean, that is your choice, opponent. Swap down. I'm guessing our opponent probably doesn't feel good about having to get rid of everything just like that for four mana. Spirit of Companion again. Woof woof. Wedding announcement. Okay. It's fine. Okay, Razor Kid Needlehead again. And this time, let's see. I want to put down the Disturbing Mirth now, but we're not going to really get much value out of it by sacking our own thing. So we're just going to have to hold off. Draw a card, get pinged. Got 18. Skyclave Apparition. No! Whatever they pick, I guess now we'll, we'll have to actually <clears throat> do some sacking. So. Traitor's Bargain. Sacrificing our own Mayhem Devil. Not ideal, but it has to be done. Spirit of Companion goes bye-bye. Unless, of course, they're going to blink it. A few moments later. Okay. So they do blink it. That's annoying. But okay. Skyclave is down. We obviously don't get an illusion out of that, but that's okay. The board is clear, so to speak. Okay. Spirit of Companion. 
Gets another card for them. But they do get pinged, so it's not like they're going to get away scot-free with this. All right. So, Tournament of Scarabs. Attack here? I guess we'll attack here. We're trying to put more pressure on our opponent here, so down to 15. The most likely take three, because usually most opponents, again, always take the damage first before they start sacking things. Draw another card to get pinged. They go down to 11. Swing here from our opponent. We're going down to 16. Get away, Glamour. And of course, they will take out our creature. Zero Beach, Spirit Companion number two. Or is that number three? Wait, is that number three? I don't know anymore. I'm losing count. All right. Well, apparently we're getting beat up by a bunch of dogs for value, but okay. It's fine. Cauldron Familiar. Ping our opponents. So this time we just need to get more value. So we're going to have to actually sacrifice our Cauldron Familiar now, which is not what I want to do. But we're going to have to do it in order to get some more action going. Oh, okay. Mm, I, guess we'll, I guess we'll do this now. Sacrifice the other one. Just a Manifest Dread. Okay, what do we get here? I guess it's going to be the Mayhem Devil. We'll put down a Swamp. And we have our opponents still at least on the ropes with the Tournament of Scarab, so it's not like they're out of the realm just yet. Wow, they actually threw away a Wrath? Okay. Well, I guess they really don't need it. They probably think they have the edge versus us. Another touch of Spirit Realm. We don't have any main deck enchantment heat, so this is the best we just have to deal with for now. Okay, Riveter's Overlook. So, let's see. How do we do this here? I guess Disturbing Mirth again. We are getting at least our card draw, which is nice, but we're not quite stabilizing still. So, Disturbing Mirth number two gets sacrificed for a three. Oh, come on, deck. Nothing but lands? Okay. Well, neither of these are going to help be helpful. Okay, so, Riveter's Overlook. Sacrifice to get a little bit of life back. We'll pull out another land, get a mountain, and we will pass here. So at the very least, our face down card as Manifest Dread can just kind of temporarily give us a little love and blocking. Okay, so, we will... Our Disturbing Mirth. We Manifest Dread at least another card. Well, I guess it'll just be a tap land. Okay, no more value for you, opponent. Do they throw away another card? Okay, another land. I'm gonna go swinging because they're getting cheeky here. Well, we're just gonna start blocking now, just to slow them down. Another Betrayer's Bargain, which is, again, not ideal, but we'll take it. At the very least, if we have to, we can pay full price. So... Nothing else, at least our Tournament of Scarabs is kind of just forcing them to, like, lose value. So, it's not like we're completely in a bad spot. Sort of. Although, ironically, those wedding announcements are actually kind of hurting us a little bit more than I thought. Wait, hold on. Chair's Bargain. Full price. Not what I want to do, but it has to be done. Swamp. Mayhem Devil. Okay, opponent, you throw away your next card. Wow, they take the damage. Okay. Wow, supreme verdict off the top. Ugh, jeez. Okay, well, board's clear, clear. They're making tokens still, which is annoying. But again, we can only just get at least something like a our cauldron familiar's witch's oven. We should be fine because at least that can stall out. But we're kind of in a weird spot. Opponent is down to six. Oh, come on. Really? Well, that might be game for us, everyone. Well, we'll have to take the damage here. Down to seven. They flip. Okay, so we're going to blow him, so he's not bad. That means that we'll put him in an awkward spot here. So, opponent, bad deal time. What do you take? What do you give us? They give us, obviously, the land. They have to give us one other card, though. Is it going to be the Risk Factor or the Witch's Oven? Ooh, they gave us the Witch's Oven. Okay. Wow, they gave us all three. Okay. Well, actually, that's not too bad. Okay, so here's how we do this. We're boating ruin. Showing off the mountain. And then... I guess we do it now. Risk factor. Do you take the damage opponents? Or do you give us three cards? Nice. Okay, so here's how we do this then. Razor kidney head. 
Oh, wait, hold on one second. I... Oh my goodness, I'm so stupid. I put down the wrong card. No, I messed this up. Okay, okay, okay. We'll decline. Wow, I feel so dumb. Okay, I think this might have costed me the match, but okay. We're just gonna have to roll with it. No attacks. Okay. Some way, somehow, I don't know how I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna try to get a win here. Okay, block the Skyclave. Witch's Oven. We go down to one. Okay, wow. I can't believe I messed that up. Alright, so. Well, we're gonna have to just find. We're gonna have to just see if we can get out of this right now with this. Down to five. Down to. This will put him down to four. Okay. Hey, draw a card. Wow, I can't believe I messed that up. Okay, so, we're still not dead dead, because here's how we do this. Risk factor. Throw away the mountain. Oh my goodness, we had no business winning that match, and we still did it. Woo! Oh my goodness, even with the misplay that I did, I somehow found a way out of that? Wow! And there you have it already, so that was our Punisher deck for you for Explorer. And you tell me in the comments below, what do you think? Would you play the deck in any way, shape, or form? Truth be told, I do like the deck, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out, but we did have quite a few uh, clunky, awkward moments. What I mean by that is, the way the deck is designed, again, the deck is not bad, it's just like the way it's designed on a budget means that, if you were noticing earlier, we had many moments where we wanted to play certain things, but because the mana restrictions for our cards requires us, for example here, Lava Tongue requires Rakdos mana specifically, Disturbing Mirth here, specifically Rakdos mana, Razor King Needlehead, however, does require two red as opposed to Rakdos mana, and that's what kind of makes it, in some situations, a little awkward to cast certain cards. Thankfully, of course, I'm already prepared for that, so if you made it this far into the video, as always, thank you so much for hanging in there, everybody, because you are my true fiery friends, and because of that, I'm going to show you right now how you can upgrade this deck to make it even more more consistent, more stronger, and better than it currently is. Now, if you do want to upgrade the deck, but you also want to maintain the integrity of the sacrificing with enchantments, here's what I'm going to recommend for you overall. Mostly, the main deck is actually already set in stone, so you don't really need to tweak too much with that. I would, however, move out of the sideboard Oni Cult Anvil and have it replace the Lava Tongue. We like Lava Tongue. I actually did like the card a lot, but it is a little bit slow, and Oni Cult Anvil gives us another more consistent way as a sack outlet to trigger off cards such as Mayhem Devil. On top of that, we'll be removing out of the main board Torment of Scarabs, putting it into the sideboard, and instead, we'll bring in the one and only Shield Rit. This, of course, is, well, I, I really don't need to say anything else about this. This card is just disgustingly powerful, and it does, of course, stack very well with Razorkin Needlehead and that game plan overall for punishing card draw. As far as the land basis upgrades, you'll put in Hive of the Eye Tyrant here, you'll put in a copy of Sokka's in, and we'll put in the most key dual lands that we can, so Blood Crypt and Blackleaf Cliffs. We will want to maintain, of course, some kind of sack outlet as well, just to trigger off Mayhem Devil again, so Fable Passage will be brought in instead to replace the Capenna sack lands. And then finally, your sideboard upgrades are going to be Thought Seizes to replace the Duresses as always. Bring in Roiling Vortex, this is again just to punish them if they are trying to then cast any spells for free, and also will ping them down, so this will again stack very well with again Razor Kid Needle Hit and Shieldred. A single copy of Fire Xene Arena for some of those slower matches where we just need to then just get some incremental value. Although granted you will lose low one life, if you do manage to have a Shieldred out, that actually won't matter at all. We're going to move in now Soul Guide Lantern now as a much more faster option for you for Graveyard Hate. We're going to bring in Op Nixilus, the Adversary, three copies of this, which is great because this will replace of course your Tybalt here, but of course we can utilize this for not only for discarding cards our opponent may have, they will then either can choose to ping themselves, it kind of still sticks with the flavor of the deck, so I really like what this card is trying to do for us. Not to mention of course it's really really evil to then utilize the casualty ability just to get extra copies of this onto the battlefield. Well then, as I mentioned earlier, Torment of Scarabs, but it's going to be now down to just one copy in the sideboard. And to round out your package, for Wraths, you'll have a copy of the original Meat Hook Masker, not to be confused with the Meat Hook Masker 2 that was introduced in the current set that is Duskmorn. And now that that all is out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I want to give on the deck. Overall, it doesn't really matter which version of Rakdos Sacrifice I play. 
I love every version, so whether it was the artifact version we played a couple months ago, or at least this version with enchantments, at least puts a little bit of a twist on the original formula. To put it another way, if you are a fan of sacrifice, if you are a fan of incremental damage by pinging out your opponent, and if you're a fan of mid-range decks that can outgrind your opponent and drive them nuts by giving them bad deals, then I would definitely say, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to get a chance to play a brand new variant of Thracto Sacrifice, you're going to have a lot of fun doing so, and you'll be very surprised at how well it does with the changes we've made to it, and you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!